Brothers and sisters of St. Gianna Bertamola Parish, good evening. This is Father Jason with my weekly message. And you can obviously tell I'm in a new location. I'm at Sacred Heart Church on Larimer Street in the Rhino District in Denver, where their pastor, Father Joseph, is allowing me to, to do our message and also to do Mass here tomorrow morning at 7.30 in the morning in English and 8.30 in Spanish. I'll then drive out to Omar D. Blair uh, school where we usually have mass. We're all here confessions between uh, 1030 and 1230. Brothers and sisters, it's appropriate. Today we're celebrating the fifth week of Lent, right? And Lent, the fifth Sunday of Lent, is the Sunday where we typically start covering images. We're kind of fasting even exteriorly from those images, those beautiful images, in order to really focus on Christ and his way of the cross as we're getting ready for Lent. I mean, as we're getting ready for Holy Week, the center of Lent. And appropriately, we're going into an intense time in Lent, this Lent, aren't we? With the governor's stay-at-home orders, a lot has changed. Uh, as we get more intense, as some of you have shared with me, People are losing their jobs. Uh, people are having to work from home. People who are going into work are dealing with very tense situations at their jobs from other people who aren't dealing with the stress so well. The people at home have to deal with the stress of being around their family members. <laughs> it's getting more intense. And how poetic was it? I don't know if you've seen it, I, I sent out the text, but you can watch it online, you watch a replay of it, but Pope Francis gave a special solemn blessing, his Urbi et Orbi blessing, he usually only does a couple times a year, um, from St. Peter's Square. And at St. Peter's Square, where it's usually filled with millions and millions of pilgrims, the Pope walked out in the evening in a storm, in the rain, limping up, to the place where he gave a beautiful message. And very symbolically, he preached about Jesus in a storm. The story of he and the disciples on the sea in a storm. And what did he say? It's a lot like what we're going through now. In the storm, the disciples are crying out, Jesus, do you not care that we are perishing in the storm as the waves are coming in over the boat? What's Jesus doing? That's right, he's sleeping. <laughs> but it's not because he doesn't care. In fact, it's a sign that he does care. He has entered into their humanity. He's so tired that he's sleeping in the stern of the boat where there's the most shaking and where the waves are coming over him. And he's worked so hard, he's, he's not even waking up. Why is Jesus doing that? He has entered into their suffering, but also he's at peace. Because, as the Pope said, he trusts the Father in these moments. He's at peace. Whereas they believe in Jesus. They believe he's there. That's why they wake him up. But they don't trust him. Now, Jesus wakes up. And even though they're men of little faith, he calms the storm. Brothers and sisters, Jesus wants to calm the storm in our hearts. And... We, uh, so in order that we would be able to calm the storms in other people's hearts and be a light that points people to Jesus. And how does he do that? Well, we're part of the church. The church is always symbolized oftentimes as a boat. It's depicted as a, a, a ship. And Jesus is in our boat, right? Even though it's a difficult time, we have everything that we need on the boat. We might wish we had other things, but what do we really need? What are we clinging to? We have all we need in the boat. We have Jesus and we have one another. Now, brothers and sisters, we want to help you out with this. And in, in order to do that, there's a few things on this week's e uh, email. One, there is the homily of Pope Francis you can read uh, with his beautiful message and reflections. But we also have some wonderful articles that help you deal with what you're going through right now, especially as we get into this uh, time at home. A lot of emotions are coming up. I have a wonderful article about anxieties that this is causing and how to deal with them. Another one on grief. We're very possibly in a state of grief. What stage are we in? I might be referring to that article many times. There's also an article on how to deal with the people that are around you. <laughs> now that we're living on top of one another, we're fighting with our, with our wives, children, um, uh, husbands, uh, the members of our home. How do we deal with that stress within the house? We have articles on that. 
So we need to come acknowledge those feelings, the, the storm that's around us and especially inside of us. But we also have to call out to Jesus. And how are we going to do that? And how are we going to help you? Well, this week, there's, there's a, a lot of good ways. One um, is we, the deacon is going to start a uh, morning prayer uh, at 830 uh, every morning. If you're interested in doing a live stream prayer with other people, send a text message or respond to, to one of our flock note emails or text messages saying that you're interested or email the parish to say that you're interested. We're also going to create a prayer chain. And we're have, uh, so if you want to be, a, as people send in prayer requests, we want to have a team of people who pray for them. Uh, what can we do in this storm? We go to Jesus and we go to one another. That's a great way to go and, and help one another, and go to Jesus and help one another. We also have a, a list of how to, uh, the, the, the church has granted many indulgences, special graces for this moment. Uh, we explain what plenary indulgences are. We have a link and, and different ways that we can receive partial or plenary indulgences. And finally, we're, I, I'm getting a team together to start calling every single person in the parish and just see how you're doing. Um, brothers and sisters, we are not alone. Uh, Jesus is in the boat, and he can calm those emotions within our hearts, that we can be a calming presence to those around us. Uh, these are moments of trial, right? But there are moments where we can grow in faith, and that's this is the only way to the other side, the other side of blessing that the Lord has for us. So let us dedicate ourselves and cling to what's really valuable, our Lord and each other. Amen.